What a wonderful way to end the day. Um, thanks so much to uh, our panel. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Heather to close out the conference. Thanks so much, particularly to the previous panel for uh, finishing on time. Um, I'm Heather Staines. I'm a senior consultant at Delta Think. Uh, and I have it right here at the beginning of my introduction to introduce myself, so check. Um, I was kind of hoping everybody might have left already to catch a train, and there'd just be a few of you and I could uh, admonish you to move up front, but congratulations to you diehards. You have almost made it to the end. This is a very unique meeting. Uh, I'm biased. I've been on the advisory board uh, for a couple of years. I think the workshop in, in particular are great for early careers, and so if you are a director or a manager, Bring along your early career, your early staff next year and let them uh, benefit from it. It's a great size uh, for networking. Uh, Mark mentioned in his intro the shortest name of an attendee uh, ever, I guess Ali Fox, I don't know who that is, but um, I think Mark's probably trying to get the shortest code of conduct ever. Uh, if you remember from the first slide, it was be nice. Too short? Uh, you be the judge, we'll see. Please do take the surveys uh, because uh, Mark takes them quite seriously. He, will, he may come to your house and chase you. Paper form, digital form, interpretive dance, we just want to know your feedback. I also had some school day flashbacks in the workshops uh, as attendance was taken and collected. Um, when I agreed to do this summary, I mainly agreed to do it so that Mark wouldn't be hassling me for years to come, that I was either afraid to do it or couldn't be bothered to do it. Now, he may still hassle me. Uh, when other people heard I was giving this summary, they said, oh, well, this means you'll have to say something nice. And I said, or do I? I've been crowdsourcing feedback from many of you over the past few days. Um, some of the hot topics of conversation in the break, sleep, amount of or amount lacking, kids these days, all ages of kids are relevant to this conversation, careers not to go into, particularly for the kids, countries we could move to if we had the choice, another big uh, one and uh, you can see why. In all seriousness, uh, both first time attendees and long time attendees gave me great feedback, uh, great food, great venue, great program. Uh, how, much it is, how much better it is to get together in real life than in Zoom. Maybe we even dress uh, better than we do on Zoom. At least we probably put on pants, I hope. Um, some of the common threads, I think, that ran through the program, um, which I'll come back to at the end, uh, one uh, which came up in the ebook Data Trust workshop, predictability versus variability. I think that's a running uh, theme. And really, equity should be something that we apply you know, constantly. So it may, came up in many, many places. I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about yesterday than today. If you can't remember what you heard today, you're not going to remember what I'm telling you now. So I think we'll be good. We were kicked off by a wonderful keynote by Antonia, and I appreciate that she has stuck it out until the end. Um, wonderful slides, uh, transition and perform. I think we all agree that both are necessary, and leadership as a mindset. Um, Antonia laid out a lot of underlying themes that we would see revisited in the presentations and workshops throughout. Uh, she and I had an opportunity to chat earlier and we both agreed we'd do a bad job prioritizing our own wellness. Indeed, she pointed out that I agreed to do this closing after all, so we're both going to try to do better. Um, we talked about remote and distributed work, which is an impact uh, on those new to the profession. Um, I'm actually going to make that my platform uh, as SSP president. Uh, which I kick off in June. So if you have an interest in that, please do uh, let me know. Um, and I learned from uh, Antonio's keynote that, that they have a bar at IOP, which is probably great for employee engagement. Um, and finally, I want to thank her for not showing the AI-generated, not safe for work rat image, because once you have seen it, you cannot unsee it. Um, next, we had a, pa a panel, a couple, a couple of presentations on local OA initiatives. Um, from Cameron, I appreciated the update on CERN. Um, we saw a model where libraries are putting money together centrally to pay the publishers. Compare that with some of the um, presentations and viewpoints in Jane's session earlier today, where um, we heard about uh, building uh, university-based infrastructure. Uh, and I was um, surprised to learn, uh, because I wasn't aware, 
about the community values uh, disclosure that the CERN uh, initiative in Scope 3 uh, put forth. And I, I appreciated the critical consideration of the project, why that may not be easily replicable by other uh, disciplines. We also heard from Ana Heredia and um, a, an overview of regional non-mainstream journals, um, filling knowledge gaps, but also bridging knowledge gaps. Um, I think many of us probably thought that OA was pretty homogeneous across uh, Latin America and Central America, and I was really surprised to learn about the differences um, in Brazil, uh, and certainly want to dig into that and, and learn more. Next up, we heard uh, Rick's uh, ever-popular debate uh, between Keith and Mandy. Um, I think this is really thought-provoking to think about the issue from both sides. What is a library? What is a librarian? I was a little bit mindful of you know, how the Grinch stole Christmas when he took all the Christmas decorations away and Christmas came anyway. Um, you take all of the uh, traditional attributes of a library away, but it's still a library. Maybe there's a musical to be had in that. Um, I appreciate the discussion of the essence of librariness. Um, and uh, I, I love how Yvonne managed to work uh, clearly bonkers in her presentation. I'm going to make an effort to do that uh, as well. I do take umbrage a bit as a historian at the notion that historians would be intimidated to walk into the computer science department to ask questions or receive a course. Um, I think it might well be the other way around, and I can't believe that Karen Wolf let that one pass. Uh, and we had, as Rick said, the, most two, the two most perfectly timed debate responses, which never happens, with the final um, results ending in a draw, the first draw ever. It's like watching a 90-minute uh, soccer, or AKA football match, and having it be a tie. So maybe next year, if that happens, we could have some sort of a shootout. Uh, translating research into action, um, I thought the benefits of broader communication, you know, we think about the general public, we wonder if they'd be interested, but practitioners and other segments could be left out of this conversation um, as well. Uh, and the idea that it takes particular skills uh, to try to translate research into small bites, uh, I think is, is something we should take a look at. Day two, remember all the way back to this morning, new models for scholarly communications. Um, I appreciated how both Yvonne and, Br and Bjorn wore multiple hats, that they were looking at the issue from uh, different perspectives. And I do, um, I was glad that the role of international collaborations coming up, that this cannot necessarily just be a university, uh, one university, uh, one credit type situation. Um, I was quite pleased that both Yvonne and Rohina or optimistic about the future. I think what else can we be, you know, if not uh, optimistic? And I really thought a lot about Bjorn's example of the professors dictating their papers and how no one would have predicted that would change. And I think we, we all need to take some mindset considerations, uh, you know, into play. Uh, Kabe told us about dealing with research misconduct and uh, the sleuth hobbyists uh, that are working pro bono. Um, I was really glad to hear some specifics because you do talk to folks on research integrity teams and they kind of say like, we can't tell you how we do it because then they'll change their ways, the paper mills. So having a little bit more specifics to kind of hang my brain on uh, was, was good uh, from my standpoint. And I think that Fluffy Rationale might be a really good name for a band, but it may well already be taken. Uh, next up, we heard about U.S. university perspectives on transformative agreements. Um, as Michael mentioned, I do work uh, together with that team a lot, so I have to disclose this conflict of interest, but um, I do think that data is continuing to grow um, in importance, and you know, I'd love to hear more about that. And then um, Ben's saga of the transformative agreement that wasn't, and actually resulted in the end of the relationship with the publisher, I want to hear that talk, and that may actually be a musical. Uh, also in its own right. Wonderful summaries of the workshops. I think I talked to people from every single workshop and putting those things together, I've done it twice, it is a lot of work. Um, so I really appreciate the time and attention that went into that. And finally, um, we don't know what we don't know. Um, switching sides assumes there's sides. Uh, I loved that. Um, and we could see from the presenters that um, most of us here wear multiple hats and we may be more alike at the end of the day than we are different. 
Um, I hadn't really heard the term triple helix before, government, university, and industry, so that's one um, I'm going to look at, and the sweet spot of collaboration, uh, that, that's a great um, way to uh, consider it as well. Uh, Karen's uh, remark that authoritarians understand how valuable and powerful history is, a little bit chilling, but um, important uh, to take that into account, and good management uh, respect the expertise of the roles within your organization. Um, in closing, looking ahead to next year, do your surveys. You might not get out of here if you don't. The program, it's always a challenge to fit everything in. What should we do next year? Start earlier, end earlier, I don't know. Maybe we could have a pre-conference the day before. Uh, I, the lengths of the breaks are the best that I have found at any conference. So thank you to the sponsors for that. Um, I think, though, today was the latest lunch ever, and I, I'm surprised we didn't have diabetics passing out all over the place, myself included. The lightning talks, I heard feed, great feedback on those. We need to get more researchers here. Um, I heard that there were many in the early career workshop, so we need to maybe amplify that to the main stage. Keep the reception. Thank you, SSP, for sponsoring that. Um, in, in conclusion, the common themes, things are always more complicated than you think and harder to scale than you might believe. Keep curiosity and goodwill. And if I might suggest a possible debate topic for next year, who would prevail in a fight, a historian or a computer scientist? Thank you. And I've even finished before six. So you can have that. Great, thank you, Heather. That was fantastic. Um, so uh, uh, it's a wonderful summing up, and it also is such a relief to me not to have to do it, so I don't have to listen to any of the sessions or anything like that. So that's great. I've just been resting for two days. It's been just marvellous. Um, it just falls on me to just almost kind of just say goodbye to you. So um, thank you, participants. Thank you, contributors. All of you who've made this the, the event that it is. It's so great to have you all here in person and to, and to do R2R again. Um, thank you sponsors um, uh, in random order, Exordo, Mosaic, um, KGL, Silverchair, Satya Scholarly Publishing, MDPI, thank you, coming back, Atipon coming back, Digital Science coming back after a bit of a break, Royal Society of Chemistry, our extremely loyal gold sponsors, thank you all for supporting the event. Um, uh, we close with a, um, not just with a sort of drifting off, because there is an opportunity to go to Scholarly Social. We kind of co-exist with them. So if you fancy going to the pub, this is the route to go, and there are some um, guidance out there. So if you want to uh, not finish now, but uh, move on to the pub, that's uh, an opportunity. Who can guess what my next slide says? Fill out the survey. Fill out the survey. <laughs> Sorry, but, you know, well done. Uh, yeah, we're kind of obsessed about this, but it's really good. A very short story. So I was, the first year I ran this, I said to another conference organizer, I was really disappointed with the surveys because we, you know, we, we can't really make sense of the data because we only got a 70% response rate. And she said, 70%? We get 5%. What are you talking about? So maybe the bullying pays off, but really, seriously, fill out the paper one and hand it in or do the electronic one in the next couple of days, please. That would be really great. Thank you. Um, so that really is it. Thank you very much for being here. See you next year, I hope. <laughs>